Okay, this is going to be, we're starting to actually work on the convertible. And in the last video, I mentioned that there wasn't any measurements down there. I just found them. It says here, um, under size and materials list, it says adult 12 inch crown to edge, adult long full cowl for 16 inches. So this will help if you can get the gauge exactly right. You'll want to make either a 12 inch square or a 16 by 12 inch rectangle to get this right. All right, so now let's get started. I'm going to flip this over here to page three of four. Okay, and the, the main section is you make the base chain with the P hook, and I'm going to do just the 12 inch one, so I'm going to chain 36. We're going to start. I've showed you before how to do the slip knot, and then you chain 36. All right, I've done 36 chains. Now I'm going to work on row one. SLB in second chain from hook and in each across, and then in parentheses it has 35. That's how many chain stitches there are going to be. So SLB is slip stitch back loop. So I'm going to slip stitch in the back loop. Now on a beginning chain, I noticed in my gauge swatch my little loops were hanging down real long on my beginning chain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this chain over and work on the ridge bump on the back. And I'm, I'm going to slip stitch all the way across. And when I do that, there should be 35 slip stitches when I'm finished. So I'm going to do just like so. So the ridge bump on the back of your chain stitch. See on the front, there's a V, and then on the back there's a bump. That bumps where I'm working my stitches. And notice that I'm still working in that fluid movement where I pull it both through the work and through the loop on the hook in one motion. Now see, sometimes I get stitches that are a little smaller and you gotta use your fingers and pull the loop up. Now we're gonna seam this when we're finished. So if it is just a little wonky on the edge, it'll disappear when we sew the seam on the hat. I wouldn't worry too much about that foundation chain being perfect. So it'll get hidden in the seam. Now you don't want it too awfully uneven. But just a little bit off, it's not going to hurt anything. And you know what? It being a little bit of imperfection shows that it is a handmade piece of art actually, you know, um, combining the colors and the stitches in an artistic way. I mean, crochet is an art. I mean, it's a skill, but it's also takes a little bit of talent to be able to get colors that look nice and uh, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. that bump. Because this is a crochet along, I'm just going ahead and recording me doing first row. Now I want to pull up a little bit first because the stitch I went into was rather tight. Which can happen, especially if you're going into the bump on the back of the chain.
All right, well, you just go ahead and uh, continue all across your chain into the last stitch, and I will um, pause the video here, and you pause your video and resume when you get down to the other end of your chain. See you in a minute. Okay, I've got to the other end of my chain, and if you're doing your slip knot as a stitch like I did, this is how you want to do it. This loop here is kind of, it's got an X down here. You want to leave that crossed over and go into the loop the same direction that tail goes. And pull it through. And you can pull that up just a little snug, more snug. You don't have to, don't pull it too tight though. Okay, now we're at the end of the row. We're going to chain one and turn. And we're going to slip stitch in the back loop in each stitch across the row. So okay, you want to take and you look for that that line of V's. Insert your hook under the back loop of that first V. Draw you want to yarn over, draw a loop through both things. There we go. And I'm going to hold my yarn this way so that I can get into the stitch more comfortably. Now if you hold your hook like a pencil instead of like a spoon the way I do it, it may be easier for you to hold your hook, your, your um, work in a different way. Which the important thing is to get comfortable. And the more comfortable you are, now somehow, oh, I know what I did. See, this happens a lot to me. I end up going through two. And you only want to go through that one loop. You don't want to go through the loop on the bottom. And the first couple rows, because you don't have a lot to hold on to, is a little more difficult, but after you get that first couple rows done, it'll go a lot easier. So, Also, if you work with a yarn like I am, I'm working with a yarn that splits real easily, so it might not be the best choice of yarn for this project. I chose it because it's light in color so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, go ahead and finish uh, slip stitching across the row, and I will resume when we get to the other end. All right, I'm to the end of row two. Now this is where we're going to put a stitch marker. I'm going into that last, that last chain stitch or uh, slip stitch. I'm going to take this out. Oops, dropped it. And I'm going to go ahead and put that slip stitch, I mean that stitch marker in that slip stitch on the last one I made on this row. Now on row three, it says to chain five and turn. So chain five now. This chain five is going to form the casing for your drawstring. That's what that is. That's what this is right here. Okay, so you chain five. And then it says to turn, and I turn it this way. And then it says slip in the back loop for the first slip stitch and each slip stitch across. The reason we mark that is because it can be confusing as to whether this or this is your stitch you work into. Well, we have it marked so it's clear which stitch we go into. So I'm going to slip stitch right next to the stitch marker. It can be left in there if you want. Okay, let me try that again. And it, oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm going through both loops. I don't want to go under both loops. So I'm going to go in the back loop. There we go. 
another thing I gotta remember is to go in the back loop. <laughs> okay, now that's your first slip stitch. So and again, you want to mark that one because we slip stitched it. Because when we come back across, we'll want to know that we go into that one, but not the one after it. So, and then when we go up, we take the lower one and we'll move it up. And that's just my method of marking stitches. Okay, get some more yarn here. going to slip it just like that. Go in the back loop, slip it, and get the stuff out of the background so it don't affect the focus here. And do this all the way across and I'm going to pause the video here and we'll pick up when I get to the other end. All right I'm at the end of row three and I am going to make my last slip stitch. Sometimes finding that last one can be difficult. I just kind of take my fingers and pull up the loop and go in there and pull it through. Right, then it says rows 4 to 57 repeat rows 2 and 3 alternately. Do not fasten off at the end of row 57. So uh, we're going to do the same thing we did for row 2 is chain 1, slip in the back loop all the way across the row. I'm going to get, I'm going to start this back up when I get to the other end just to show you how to move the stitch markers up. Okay? So I'm going to pause it here and I will see you at the other end of row four. All right, I'm up to the stitch marker on row four. So you go into the stitch that's marked in the back loop only and make a slip stitch. Okay, now we want to mark that last slip stitch we made. We're finished with this marker on the lower part. So I'm going to take that marker off and put it in. The stitch that I just made. And then you continue like you did on row three, where you chain five. One, two, three, four. Slipped out there. Five. You turn and you go back across. Um, I just kind of hold the marker back out of the way a little bit. And slip stitch into that first stitch. Okay, now this is the first slip stitch of the next row. So now, sorry about clanking that. Take the lower marker, bring it up, and mark the stitch we just made. Slip stitch across the row, um, just like we did before. And continue until you get to row 57, or until you have it 12 inches long. So I'm going to stop the video here and I'll make a new video when we finish row 57 or when I get to 12 inches and just continue doing this in the same manner. You'll have a row of loops on one end and the other end will be fairly straight. It'll be just a slight little bump for the ribbing on this end. I'll show you with my finished one. Let's see, this is just a little bit of a bump from the stitches. So, um, like I said, I will 
make the new video when I get to the end of row 57 and together we'll see what we do next. So I will see you when I get up there. Happy crocheting.